Hello and welcome to the video where I demonstrate the features, functionality and programming of our temperature sensing Digifire 10 controller. Before I demonstrate the programming of this controller, I need to review and explain some of its features first that are important to know before you actually use this controller. Firstly, like all our controllers, the Digifire 10 will operate on 12 volts DC only. You cannot operate it from a wall socket or using AC current or 120 volts or 240 volts or anything like that. 12 volts DC only. Attempting to run it on voltages other than that uh, will damage the controller and possibly ruin it. You can, however, use step down converters that will convert the electricity from your wall socket to 12 volts DC. But it's important to remember that uh, the converter you use does provide the necessary amperage to run the heaters. Typically we recommend 5 to 10 amperages of output. Secondly, many people do not realize that the tip and the power cord of these controllers contains a fuse. And when they're having problems with the controllers, the LEDs aren't lighting up or the heaters aren't warming up, they don't realize that the fuse is blown. So to access it, just undo the tip tip that fuse out and inspect that fuse. If the small wire inside that is broken, you need to replace it. Also, it also means that if you do have a blown fuse, the problem lies not with the controller, but with one of your heaters. So you will need to find out why that is happening. Uh, thirdly, this controller has the capability of our Digifire 7, which is the duty cycle control or power setting control or whatever you want to call that in 10% increments, which is indicated by this scale here on the left. The unique thing about the Digifire 10 is that it can also operate using temperature sensing capabilities built into it. And that is represented by this scale on the right. And you'll see a scale from 1 to 10 in degrees centigrade on that. So you can use the, the temperature sensing function to get this controller to sense surface temperatures on your devices and keep this, use this controller to keep them at a specified uh, number of degrees above the ambient air temperature. Also, on this controller we have a low voltage cutoff indicator which is this LED right here. We have these built into all of our controllers now and uh, its purpose is to protect your battery from being too deeply discharged. Uh, a lot of sealed lead acid batteries, uh, in fact all of them, will be damaged internally if you discharge them too deeply beyond 11 volts. So we have a cutoff voltage of 11.6 programmed into our controllers and uh, they uh, will turn off the heaters and this LED will flash. I'll demonstrate this. I'll turn on the power to the controller. You can see here now that all four LEDs here on the right have lit up for these outputs. I will now turn the voltage down to the point where it is below the safe operating range and you can see now that the low voltage cutoff indicator flashes and in a moment, the LEDs will turn out as they have now done there. So now, this your controller has gone into low voltage cutoff mode. The power to the heaters has been turned off, and uh, it will not uh, engage the controller again until the proper voltage has been established. So I will do that now. I'll just pretend we've charged our battery here, and we're now back up into the proper voltage range. You can see the low voltage indicator goes out and the power to the heaters comes back on. So thank you very much. We'll now get into the programming uh, aspect of this uh, controller and also an explanation of all the outputs and inputs. Okay, back to the uh, outputs and inputs and how to program this Digifire 10. Uh, you will note that there are six outputs on this controller uh, and they are numbered on the face here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Outputs one through four are the only programmable outputs on this controller. 
outputs 5 and 6 are dedicated to 12 volts. They cannot be programmed. They are intended to run 12 volt devices. Uh, but any devices you do run from this must have uh, a male RCA connector in order to interface uh, with these connectors. Uh, you can run heaters from these outputs if you wish. They'll just be uncontrolled and will run quite warm. Uh, also, we have two inputs on this uh, controller right here, and these are for the temperature sensor, the external sensors that go to your optic or your devices or whatever it is that you're trying to keep warm. This sensor input is for output 1, this sensor input is for output 2. Outputs 3 and 4 cannot be controlled using temperature sensing mode. On this side of the controller you see a small hole in the chassis, and behind that hole is the sensor uh, to measure the ambient air temperature. So it is the difference between the ambient air temperature and the variance that you've programmed into this controller at your surface or your optic or whatever it is you want to keep warm uh, that will enable the temperature sensing function in this controller and thereby keep that device uh, above the uh, dew point. So now uh, on to the actual programming of this controller. 